Hey guys, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel and welcome back. As many of you probably already know, I'm an art teacher, but more specifically, I'm a private art teacher. And being private, I have the unique opportunity to listen to what many artists think, worry about, and stress over. During these times, the main question I usually hear is, when should I focus more on being creative? And when should I focus more on being technical? Well, I'm here to answer this question once and for all today by offering you a very straightforward, no nonsense answer. So to set the tone for today, I'd like to first talk about what the overall goal of your art might be. So ask yourself, what's your goal? Is it to be a fantasy illustrator? Is it to be a video game concept artist? Is your goal to be a fine arts abstract expressionist or surrealist? Is your goal to be an industrial designer? The reason you want to ask yourself this is because what I just mentioned above are the goals that you might be pursuing or at least thinking of pursuing. Each one of these goals require a different end game, quote unquote, meaning they all require a unique way of researching, focusing, planning, and expressing your visual thoughts. Each one of these are part of a unique community that require years of research, immersion, and most of all, passion. This passion is what pulls us and drives us towards a goal. This passion seduces us into studying it and drowning ourselves in its complexity, both visually and emotionally. That passion is what will eventually start to define us as artists, because it's a topic, a culture, a way of thinking that other fellow kindred spirits will be able to relate to and respect your art with. Ultimately, your artwork will be your means to communicate with your audience in your own unique way. Well, communication is language. In our case, it's visual language. For instance, growing up watching anime, you'll have a detailed and cultured understanding of the language of anime, its unique nuances that you are sensitive to due to your years of watching countless animes. Subtle design choices, unique approaches to color, texture, visual storytelling, pacing, movement, lighting, and expression. These will excite you profoundly and draw you in emotionally. Or maybe you grew up with an obsessive love for RPG fantasy like Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering. You've read countless novels and you have a short list of your absolute favorite authors. Maybe you spent years of your life in a basement playing Ravenloft by Candlelight, poring over dice and character sheets and imaginary landscapes and creatures and legendary weapons. I can't stress enough how essential this passion is towards forging your legitimacy in whichever field you pursue. Because, rest assured, if and when you join that Blizzard team of concept artists for the future expansion of World of Warcraft, you will be surrounded by fellow World of Warcraft fanatics who've been playing since back in the day of 2004 and 2005. You might have had a Lich King poster posted on your wall next to your computer that you'd glance at when you were waiting in queue. In becoming part of that team all those years later, after countless hours of artistic training, what will lead you to meaningful and memorable business and personal connections with your colleagues are those commonalities. However, that's where the training comes in. Because without solid academic professional training, you are but a dreamer. A dreamer who can admire and understand the fine complexities of your community. However, lacks the means to communicate that passion fully and effectively and meaningfully to your peers. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where the fundamentals come in. So what are the fundamentals? Well, 
Think of the fundamentals as the language of art. Because when we take the perspective of language in this conversation, all of a sudden, the intricacies of language become evident. The best analogy that I can use is humor or comedy. I'm from Quebec, Canada. I was raised and live in a bilingual world of English and French. It's part of my everyday life. Every second person I meet and here at the cafe or waiting in line will speak in one of these two languages at least 90% of the time. I spend most of my time being able to effectively communicate in either language. However, being from an Anglophone family who spoke English at home most of the time, naturally, I'm far more fluent in English. It's the language that I think in and dream in. As such, I was always aware of the rapidly changing trends in the evolution and clever uses of the English language from before I was born to today. Accents and terminology of the 1920s, as well as the tonality of people's voices have changed dramatically by the time I was born in the 1970s. In elementary and high school, my friends would introduce me to new words and expressions, just like today in the schoolyard, usually rude, of course, but they were all unique manipulations of the language that we picked up on and used within our social circle to identify and validate how included we were in this community. And of course, expressions would evolve and expire, just like fashion. Some words and expressions lasted the test of time and therefore developed historical significance to them, shareable between the generations. In order to use these unique words and expressions effectively, you needed to not only understand what those expressions were, but you needed to know their origin and their intention. You needed to know how to say them beyond the objective word themselves. Saying it wrong or out of context exposes your, quote, illegitimacy. And that came at a terrible social cost. It was a complicated and convoluted game of keeping up that goes on with increasing intensity as every generation passes. Today is no exception. Then there's the French language. French is not my mother tongue. And although for most of my life, I could carry on a fluently functional conversation, I wasn't immersed enough to convincingly use it in a way to define me. It was merely a form of generalized communication. And rest assured, anytime I'd try to test the waters and try something clever or funny, my Francophone friends would most likely smile politely, pat me on the back for my honest effort and not react the way I'd hoped. I didn't keep up with the shows or the bloggers, the music, the news, the politicians, and therefore my skill wasn't sufficient to manipulate the language in a creative and current way well enough to impress anyone. It's for this very reason that I consider humor and comedy the truest testament to one's prowess in any language because a comedian requires all of the above qualities at a much higher level, both creatively and socially, to make others laugh and cheer. It's for this reason that so many comedians such as Stephen Colbert, Trevor Noah, George Carlin, Joe Rogan, Jonathan Pye, Stephen Fry, and many others are in a sense leading the political conversations of today. It's their unique and deeply researched understanding of both cultural and human topics that make them such effective and moving communicators on social issues. This is why comedians like, for instance, Russell Brand can obliterate politicians in verbal debates or how Christopher Hitchens could sway the beliefs of thousands of faithful churchgoers when standing toe to toe with powerful politicians and institutions. They mastered the language and learned the art of weaponizing it with humor. This is where you come in. 
This is where the fundamentals come in. The fundamentals are the tools that you must first deeply and masterfully learn in order to become an effective visual communicator. It's the first and arguably most important step towards transitioning your passion into a meaningful expression. The fundamentals are your commitment to taking your creative skill to a professional level that you aim to impact others with. Think of it as the DM guide, the monstrous compendium, character sheets and dice that you need to roll in Dungeons and Dragons to play the game. It's the macros, maps, gameplay mechanics, and strategy guides that you need to study to raid in World of Warcraft. Without those tools, you aren't really playing the game yet. You can try and fake it, but the real pros can always distinguish a true professional from a pretender. But with enough training, practice, studying, applying, researching, experimenting, you will eventually start to find moments of frustration with the fundamentals. You will naturally start noticing limitations and obstacles with the fundamentals, and you will bravely start manipulating those fundamentals. Often, very often, you'll notice that the problem wasn't the fundamentals, but rather how well you understood them. And sure enough, someone who's better versed in the fundamentals will educate you and help you push forward. Other times, however, you realize that your intuition served you better than your pre-existing fundamental training. You'll do something playful with color or composition, for instance. You'll break the mold of standard value patterns and achieve something that feels viscerally and emotionally more impactful. And remember, this is something that you'll notice happen naturally. This isn't a predetermined methodical step in fundamental training. This is a personal emotional step that you'll need to take yourself when the time is right. And as time passes, this intuition of yours will grow bigger and stronger. You'll start to learn the fine art of manipulating these fundamentals in a creative way to personalize them to your particular visual language style. And one at a time, be it line or color or value or texture or composition or visual storytelling, you'll pull them apart gently and uncover new remarkable things, things that you didn't necessarily learn in school. But with your deep and masterful understanding of the language, to those astute and trained enough to understand this culture as well as you, your unique expression will be felt and understood and appreciated. Your uniqueness will be loved and celebrated because you took the time to learn it properly and immerse yourself deeply in that culture. You'll also learn to respect other artistic cultures different from your own, such as comic art or impressionism. You'll start to realize that comic art isn't just, quote, drawing in panels, or that impressionism isn't, quote, drawing with paint dabs. Rather, they're deeply historical and involved cultures that have a great long history. You'll start to realize that the art in and of itself is only a tiny facet of the big picture that these art forms represent, and that the cultures actually play a much bigger role. You'll realize that ultimately, it's the community that will have the final say on your artwork, and that transcends your technical skill. One of the things that I remind my students and my friends of regularly is that you aren't just producing art for yourself. You need to respect your audience. Your audience are paying close attention to what you do and know the culture of what you're painting intimately. Aim to move them emotionally with your work. They might have zero idea what went behind your artistic expression on a technical level, but they know the culture and they definitely know the history. If you don't believe me, listen to how trading card players admire, scrutinize and critique the card art. 
even though they might have little to no artistic skill themselves. They know it well. They have a huge library of knowledge of what the art needs to be to be authentic to the genre. So where does this practically leave you, fellow artist? Well, it leaves you with this. First, ask yourself what matters most. Don't ask yourself, hmm, what can I become? Rather ask yourself, who am I? Or who have I always been? This is the you. This is the culture side of the issue. It's what validates you belonging to any given culture. Sometimes this culture is of your own making. Just make sure that it's something that's relatable. However, don't panic if you can't think of anything right away. Sometimes you need to improve your technical skill in order to better realize what part of yourself you feel most satisfied expressing. And that requires a bit more time and experimentation under the right fundamental conditions. After that, and I can't stress this enough, trust the fundamentals. The fundamentals are the language that you must first learn and learn extremely well. You will spend your entire life mastering the fundamentals, and I guarantee you they will always serve you well. The fundamentals are also a key to the history of your culture. It's your responsibility to learn and understand the past, the present, and maybe even predict the future of. And please, never take for granted the incredible wisdom and powerful tools that our predecessors have learned for us. It's for this reason that I can't stress enough the importance of art teachers like Charles Bernard from Online Art Academy, for instance, who bridge that gap between the language that we use today and those who actually wrote the language, such as Bernie Fuchs and Norman Rockwell, those who he learned from directly. Then, naturally, in a very non-forced way, you will feel so fluent, so immersed in this particular visual language that you will decide one day to be creative with the language itself in a way that bends the rules. You will feel excited about this expression. It'll be polished and culturally significant. Most importantly, you won't feel like you're taking a shot in the dark. That place you might find yourself in sometimes that makes you feel like you have no idea what you're doing as an artist. Sometimes that makes you question your career choices. You won't feel lost because you'll know that this is the natural next step in your visual form of communication. It will be a culmination of your many years of technical, cultural, and creative training and experimentation. Just like a comedian who must first master both language and culture to make others genuinely laugh, you as an artist will learn the language and culture to make people feel, genuinely feel something that moves them in the way that you want them to move. As Chuck Jones quotes in his book, Chakamuk, one of my personal favorite books growing up, he says, master the fundamentals of painting and drawing so well that you will one day be able to ignore the fundamentals and create the real thing, art. With that said, I thank you very much for joining me on this journey today. And before we close up, I want to invite all of you to go and check out my friend Antonio Staperz's channel, Cutting Sketch Designs, because he just announced a huge project that's aimed to crank up your artistic growth by around 650,000%. So don't forget to check it out. I'll definitely link all of the info in the description below. And if of course, if you like today's talk, don't forget to give it a quick like and subscribe to please those algorithm gods. And of course, I send you all my love and happy painting. Take care.